and welcome back to the live coverage from Dice Tower Con. This is day number three. And before we get it started with our special guest, Ignacy, we just wanted to make a couple announcements about this is not the final bit of streaming that's going to be on this channel today because tonight at 7 o'clock we're going to have the Jack Vassal uh, charity auction that's going to be streamed live. And then at 9.30 we're going to have the top five overrated games. Again, that's the Jack Vassal Memorial Fund charity event at 7 o'clock streaming here. And then 9.30 the top five overrated games will be announced. And both of those items are things that are going to be hosted by Tom in the other room, I believe. So if you've been watching this for the past three days, wondering where time is, and it's like, why are these goofballs sitting on Tom's channel talking? He'll be on tonight. There you go. But we are excited to have the CEO and famed designer, Ignacy Chebyshek from Portal Games, Hello. sitting in to tell us about the game that's going to be coming out at Gen Con that he's been talking about for many months now, Detective a modern crime board game. And Ignacy, you got to teach uh, Chaz and I, along with uh, Jamie and uh, his wife last night, how to play this game. And we'll be talking more about that, but why don't you just kind of give us an overview of the game. So this is a deduction game. Every player is an investigator and they have to solve the crime. And um, this is a card game. You have a deck of cards. Each card represents a clue. You can go to the crime scene. You can go to the talk to the suspect or witness, etc., etc. And the whole game takes place actually not at the table but between players. Like there's so much table talk. They read one card, just paragraph or two paragraphs of the of the text, and then they talk about it for five or six minutes. What they learned, what they, the theory, etc., etc. So this is like much more game taking place between players than actually on the, with the pieces. There's not too many pieces in the game uh, after all. So when I was teaching you guys yesterday, I just hand you the introduction and you just started playing. Like that was like that. That's right. Mm -hmm. And just uh, for clarification, there is a small board and some uh, tokens and pieces that go with the game, but it's being used for demo purposes. So there's a board that shows locations where you can move like uh, from the headquarters to a lab and, Police uh, department, uh, yes. card houses, etc. Five locations. And then there's also a tracker on the board for time, like from 9 a.m. till 4 or 5 p.m. in the afternoon, where you track. As each of these cards, when you do some investigation, uh, it takes a little bit of time. Yep. And that's a resource that you have to manage because uh, the scenario that we had just said you got four days to answer this question. Yep. So each of those days consisted of like eight hours. And so we had to manage our time, and, and, we, and like you said, e there's, e there's, each of these cards has a lot of clues in them, but you'll never see all the clues, right? So this is exactly the case that the convention case that we are running is at only two days, and the players are given the whole deck of cards, and you say, you have only two days, you will not see all these cards. Like you have to choose wisely which card you want to follow, and each card has a, a little bit of the clue, and then you have to take this puzzle and make it a as a full theory with the full solution. So it's a ton of ton of small clues, small clues, and you have to add it up and build something. Yes, and uh, so without giving anything away, and that's the tough thing about this game is, is how to show it because uh, everything's got to stay a secret, right, Jazz? Yes, exactly, because you are literally, un you are discovering and uncovering clues. So everything has to remain a secret. So it makes it really difficult to, you can't spread out all the components because you, know, you don't want to have any spoilers. But boy, howdy, when you are going through that deck last night, like last night when we got the demo, when you're going through that Up deck. To 20 cards. Uh, and, and, <laughs> yeah. and, and you're discovering things. You really felt a sense of discovery when you're going through finding those things and putting the pieces together. That's right. And this is something you've been working on for how long now? We announced the game uh, last Gamma Trade Show, and it was already in the works. So it is like uh, a year and a half, like loads of work. Like this was. And the reason why is because you've got you've got this elegant story uh, that that's uh, in this uh, box, and plus you've got like external sources, like a website that you had to build. Yes, Tell yes. us a little bit about wow. that. So there is a ton of, of content on the website. So. We use the website that it pretends to be the police website. So you are the investigator, so you log into the police system and you drop the data from the police. So there is a, a ton of files on every single character in the game, fingerprints, DNA samples, interrogation. So we have recording from the interrogation. You played yesterday, and uh, these interrogations were as a text file. We hope to have MP3 files so you can actually listen to the guy when he is telling oh, like, that's So we are cool. working, we are working on that right now. So 
you will have the access to what police know about all these characters and just log in and you'll get the data. So it's super, super cool. Yeah, and for example, how that worked in the chat is you were working the computer. That what? was the awesome moment, like yeah. the one that was awesome. Uh, I thought that was so great because, yes, we had one person going over a thing of cards. Another player had was taking all of these notes. And we I, took a lot of notes. A lot of notes. Pages, literally, pages, pages of, notes. of notes. I was on the computer, actually plugged into the website. I was I was entering, entering in evidence and I was looking at like soil samples and other things, letters we discovered, interrogations and everything. And while you were working on the cards, I went over and I was like, looking at one file, looking up another record. I was just like, guys, I found a correlation between these two files. Did we ever okay. notice this? These are linked. And that it was okay. great. Yeah. And, uh, and the way the uh, like the fingerprints and everything works is there's there's codes yes. all on the cards that will have like maybe a fingerprint code. Yes. And you enter it to the system and it stores that. Yeah. And it could be a partial print, it could be a full print. And if they've been ever fingerprinted before, it'll say, there's a match. This fingerprint is for this person. And it unlocks some new information for you. And some points sometimes as well to let you know you're on the right track. So that had to be a beast of a thing Boy. to design that website because I assume there's a back end, I mean a real back end yeah. database that's managing all this. And I guess people will have their own accounts because when they log in, they play. Does. Because you go from case one to case two, there's a little bit of information from case one that you might could use in case two. That is exactly the case. That is a campaign game, so each case is connected, so that data that you put into the database in the first game might and will matter in the following cases. So yes, it stores all the data you have and the more you put in, the more you get back during the whole campaign. So it is a lot of work, but uh, hopefully, hopefully, you guys will have a great time with that. We, we had a great time last night. The only thing that, that got me was, like, I don't know where to start. It was basically, oh, yeah. uh, you told us, and said, like, here's, here's the board, here's kind of how this works, here's some symbols and what the symbols mean. For example, there was, like, an at symbol, uh, and that would mean you could look it hashtag, up for free. Hashtag ad and Wi-Fi, three, three yeah, symbols. Yeah, right? three, three symbols, and the, uh, the hashtag was, like, a number, a card number. Yes. And then the Wi-Fi symbol was, you could actually go Google some information yes. and, find, and, and a lot of the stuff we were doing without giving anything away was historical in nature. That's what I thought was amazing. We got into this story and there was a little Wi-Fi symbol. Go look this up. And it was one of those moments, the very first one. Jamie was reading. Uh, yeah, yeah. He was, he was looking up everything on, on, on the internet because the card um, was telling the story and it mentioned this, uh, this thing. And it's like, well, that's kind of a... We have to be very vague. vague. <laughs> yeah. it, it was this, this thing that was integral to the plot, but it was kind of like this fantastical kind of uh, thing that had happened in history. Well, that, that's a neat little thing that uh, a piece of fiction you wrote. And then a little Wi-Fi symbol. So we go to Google and we look this up and we realize that's a real thing that actually happened in history that's now part of this story that you're, this narrative we're weaving. It was amazing tying that together. And it was important to know that piece of history because some of it that helped, helped, you, us, yeah. helped us uh, resolve some of the clues yes. that we had found. Yes, dates and times that things happened in, in actual real history actually correlated to dates and times events were happening in the game. That's why I can't, now did you write this yourself? Did you have somebody else write the so, story? So there's the thing is that Przemysław uh, Remer, friend of mine from college times, he wrote the whole script for the story, like the, all the, the meta plot, the, the things that are invented by him. I, I always say he's the guy who could easily work for HBO or Netflix and just write the scripts of t shows. Like he has that side of that kind of brain. And then we got from him this huge file of this what happened, this all meta plot. And we, as a game designers, we then put them on the card. So, yes, I was just doing this small thing that this information, this card, this information, this card, while he just invented the whole. All the things that you were surprised at, this is his, like, he's amazing. Yes, yeah. When you first uh, mentioned it at Gamma 2016, yeah. Yeah. I thought, wow, that's going to be really ambitious. And it turned out to, yes, this is really ambitious, and it's really neat to see it all coming together. Yeah, and it's one of those things that the, the longer I played, and we played, what, about three hours yeah. once we got the rules down. Uh, plus like, oh, plus ordering a pizza. Plus, well, we had to order pizza. <laughs> yeah, that took even longer than learning the rules. <laughs> Well, look, I, I, I had to make sure everybody was happy with what was on their pizza. Learning the rules to this game took, now we learned it from someone who knew the game, so we didn't learn it fresh, uh, cold from the rule book, but learning the game took 10, maybe 15 minutes, maybe, and we had yeah. everything we needed to get in and start. And, and that was really just how the mechanics work, yes. and then basically you, you handed the, uh, the case file Intro. over to Jamie, and, go. And, and he read this story. And we were and, in. And so we were given these characters and stuff, and then on the back it said, okay, here's what you need to do. I'm just making up something. Uh, somebody was killed, uh, why were they killed, or something like that, or who killed them, or something like that. You've okay. got four days to solve this. Yes. And, we go, and that's what kind of okay. got me, because 
like when I play an RPG and they say, okay, guess what, you're in a tavern, go. I don't know how to start. Yep. And that, that's what was getting to me last night. It's like, I, I don't know what to do or how to start. And so you start out kind of slow, but as we started going and we started reading clues, I started I'm understanding these together, characters. Yes. Okay, this person is related to this person in this way. And then that's where, I wish we'd had this last night, you were putting together a whiteboard. Yeah. Oh, that, yes. That, oh. that people were using today. And they I are talked, using it all day today, yeah, yes. I talked to Emerson Matsuishi, who came yeah. by and played. Uh -huh. He said they were using the whiteboard like you see in, on TV in police rooms. They were writing up facts and, put, and, and, and putting uh, stickies on there. Yeah, and, post-it and, notes. And linking clues together. That's super fun. And, and the fact that this game can actually cultivate that is just fantastic. Yeah, so it's, like you said at the beginning, it's not about what's in the box or the game board, it's what's happening outside it's of it. It's all talking, it's yep. all discuss, discussion. I think, in my opinion, that that's happened. My thing is, here's what happened. Like, everybody's just talking, 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 and throwing the ideas, and then I think you're right. I think you're right, and you're going this, this direction. Right, and uh, what's really interesting is you told us at the beginning, you really don't win the game, and I was like, I, I don't understand, but now that I've played it, I see, because what happens is, after you finish the four days, you go back to the computer, and you say, okay, we finished. And then we get a series of questions. And how and well we answered. The answer first question, you were so panicked and you were like debating, but then you get it right. But yeah. <laughs> for a moment, I go, they. <laughs> so then they, so we get a series of questions, and based on how well we answer those questions, which we answered from through clues and evidence that we found, it kind of rates us yeah. on a scale of, of like zero out of 40 or 50 or whatever. How many things do we get right? Yeah. And you can't, you can't just go in there and game it because if you're right, you get positive points. If you choose the wrong answer, you get points deducted from your score because you did sloppy detective work. Mm -hmm. But there's also a one option, just neutral. Of, you know, I don't know. So you were able to just kind of say, you know, we're not going to press our luck on this. So you couldn't go in and just game it to try. You really had to think about those answers you were putting well, in. I, my play tester were doing that so that's why we had to add we don't know because they were I don't know but whatever yes so we had to we had to change it yeah and I thought that was a nice touch yeah and then you said that uh, like uh, even though there's there's six cases at this moment six cases six five cases. in the base game and the one for the convention and for the pre-order campaign yes and so this is each case is three hours or so? three hours out of the box you will get like 15 18 hours of gameplay like it is a huge beast is there any replayability though? Probably. This is very difficult, difficult topic. So officially, my official answer: no. And officially, as you played it yesterday, you, you saw it. You, you, you already know that there was all some, some cards that you haven't seen, yes. and they are very, very tempting. So I can see players finish the campaign, have a great time, and then go back to it like a year later, once again with different, different clues. Because out of this deck, out of this deck of 35 cards, you will see. My playtesting sessions uh, prove that you see only 20 cards. So there's like a, you get like that many cards you saw, that many cards you didn't see. And it is tempting to play again and see other, other clues. So I don't see people playing it over and over and over again, but I see some groups that will, let's do it again. Mm -hmm. But, but officially, but official, you know, officially there's no replayability. Understand. And then I think you said at the beginning that uh, even though each case is an individual case, there may be something overarching that's there going is. on that ties everything there together. Is. I believe you call those meta plots. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. these are meta plot points that, uh, when you maybe get later on in the case, you go, wait a minute, remember in case this one, exactly yeah. the case. there this was this exactly person. Yeah, and, and then that, because that because it was entered into the website, yep. you can go back and find it. Yep. Yep. So exactly. in the when you play the game, the first case, some action some decision of non-play characters might look for you what why he did that in the third scenario you will totally know why he did that like this is like you are discovering and wow now we understand so these aha moments will be you have aha moments when you solve the case but you have also aha moments like wow now it makes sense like the big sense and these are like super super uh, amazing moments and I, I i hope and i wish that you guys will have them yeah, and uh, one thing happened to us last night. Uh, we were giving a task to do. And remember you told us a couple times, guys, check what your task is. Because we <laughs> found right. this cool thing, yeah. and we wanted to go Ooh. find out about this cool thing, and you stopped us. If you do that, you're going to waste time. Is that going to help your end goal? So it was like, but we really want to see that cool thing, but that wasn't our goal. So we kind of had to leave it aside and go do this but we might get to come back and do that cool thing in, in yeah. the future because we're going to need it for a future case. Yep. And there was also this, uh, you found one of these, there is uh, in this scenario, I think there is a four of these cards in the first case, the plot card. 
the card that you are shuffling into the next case. You found one of these cards, right? Yes, yeah, so that, that's true. So as we're playing, it says, take a card from this deck, but put it into case number two. Yes, and so you're like actually so have this, this, moving this an event or seeding some things so it will go into a future case. And if you hadn't stumbled onto that card, you obviously might not have it for the next yeah. one. But I thought that was a really neat way to help also tie them so you, together. So you found some things of the big meta plot. Mm -hmm. You wasted a little bit of time because you are not going towards the actual case, but you will get the card that will help you in the case number two or three or four. So you are building up for the next cases, which is... So we are not wasting time. We are just helping you, you in the future, right? But there are some game elements to this in that each of us uh, took on a role of an investigator and had a special ability. Because on each one of these cards at the bottom, there may be an icon that says, if you spend this icon, and there are these tokens that we have at the beginning of the game. Like four different if, specialty tokens. Yes. Yep. If you spend that, you get to flip the card over that might give you some more information. Maybe. That was one of the part of the major discussions because we talked, well, we've only got one of these tokens. Do we want to spend this now on this or should we save it for something else? And you have to make that decision now. Right now. Unless there is somebody has a special ability that it may cost more in the future to come back to it. But then there's these different things. It's like to get additional tokens. There's ways yep. to generate special tokens or, or generate upgrade tokens, but it just takes time. So, and that's, I thought that was really neat because this game is so open-ended and kind of discussion driven that managing your time as a resource yep. and those little icons or to use the cards as a resource it's like okay there it's like well, at first when we sat down i was thinking what's going to keep us from just sitting down and reading every card and flipping them all and i realized oh if we do that we're going to waste all our time and we're not going to have the icons available to do that so there actually was some game to this with managing those resources to be able to complete everything we needed to find all the clues within the time we had allotted you you had you had this list of all the cards available and like every 10 minutes you were Let's recap. Let's uh, we have this, this, and this. What we should do because yeah. you know that you will not do everything. So we right. had, you had, we know that much. What we want to discuss, what we want to discover, which card we want now to draw. Yes, this is yeah. What part they of the do, game. what they do is each of the cards are numbered and they have some sort of title like uh, Joe Bob's bio or you know information on this piece of evidence, and that's all we know. Then we have to decide well. Is it worth spending time to read that card? Mm -hmm. And when, if we pull it out of the deck, at the top it tells you it takes this many hours to use this card. This, you just, you this, this lady was speaking very, very slowly. It yeah. takes you six <laughs> hours. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Let's go investigate her. It should only take an hour. You pull out, she talked really slow. It took three hours. Oh. Yeah, but then I didn't realize this till later in the night that there's a lab where you can do this really in depth investigation on fingerprints and, and analysis and stuff. But that takes the longest amount of time. So you can't just keep going to the lab because you'll waste all your time. Uh, that was another thing. Was it, um, different sections of town on the board that you go to have an average amount of time each yeah. thing takes. Lab so on the average. So expect something, yes. Yes, yeah. So set the expectations of how long each area might take you to do. That's right. So this game is going to be coming out at uh, Gen Con. Yep. It is on pre-order for pickup. So if you don't want to rush and run and fight at the booth, you can pre-order it right now for pickup at Gen Con. And if you're not coming to Gen Con, it will be released like two weeks after Gen Con. Like it is already in American. And what's the MSRP on it? 50. 50. And uh, yeah, you do have the great system where you can pre order and, and avoid that being crushed up against the because doors this on is Thursday. It's crazy each year. It, it happens each year. Like, yes. Mm -hmm. And you did, it, uh, you did it a couple years ago at Cry Havoc, did yeah, it last yeah. year with First Martian. So he has this big stack of games. And there's going to come a point in time when somebody says, I want to buy one of those games. And he has to go, Nope, did you pre order? Sorry, you don't get one. But casually, somebody will walk up, I pre-ordered, I'm going to take yeah. that now. Yeah. It's a great system. It doesn't cost you anything, except not getting uh, pummeled when you're running out to the booth. It's a great system. And then you've also got uh, later coming out later, uh, Luke uh, came and showed us about Monolith, Monolith, Arena, Monolith Arena, which will be coming at uh, Essen. But this is the big game right now. And, I, and I'll tell you, uh, after we left the room last night, we were all just giddy. We were talking. Yes. That was so yeah. cool. We that's, were still talking cool. about the story that's and everything. Cool. We really got into the story. Yes. And the one the reason why is it, without revealing anything, it was historical based. Yeah. And it was, I learned stuff. Oh, when I had word. to go out to the Wi-Fi and like, oh, wow, I didn't know that. Uh -huh. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's like that actually was a thing that existed. Really? Yeah. There were a couple of things, moments like that. Like, I, th you, this is Wikipedia. This is Google. You can't, you know. Ignacy's not writing this or controlling it. This oh, is a real thing. You could overwrite Wikipedia. <laughs> that would be a lot of work. <laughs> That's maybe the expansion. We'll overwrite Wikipedia. Which also brings up a follow-up question. Oh. This is ripe 
for more stories and expansions is that in the plans? So Detective is a game system, like many of our games. So we, we build an engine and it may be driven by scenarios. Like Robinson Crusoe, like all our games are basically more or less scenario based. So it all depends on the customer. It depends on you guys. Uh, we hope that we will have a chance to make the uh, expansions. I had a great time uh, designing this, this game and I hope that I will be able to create a couple of new cases. It's a great fun. It's all that I care about is a board that tells stories. Like this is what I, I love to do, writing stories. So I hope we will have expansions, but it depends on you guys. Yep. And uh, I guess, you, could you use just the same board and tokens and everything and just uh, release new decks of cards? So that's yes, it. Yes. So it would just be the cost of releasing new yep. decks of cards. Yep. So it's not like spending another 50 bucks. No. Just be where the cost of the yep. cards are. Well, I say, we played this for three hours solid last night. Time flew by, but even sitting down for three solid hours with it, it left me wanting more. <laughs> but you know what was funny? So we talked about ordering pizza. It almost felt like we were in some police place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we were walking yeah. around the table, we were eating yeah. pizza, drinking. Like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Look yeah. at this uh, uh, you know, evidence over there. <laughs> yeah. We just walk around and talk. It's, you can, when you're discussing it, you can ignore the game board altogether at yeah. that point. Yeah. You're, you're just discussing and interacting. So that's why the two uh, the time flew by, because yeah. you're not sitting there in a chair for three hours. You get right. to move around. So, and I highly recommend getting a whiteboard if you get this game. Or a cord cool. board with some red string. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Start putting in pins and, and putting string between them. So that's fantastic. So again, you can pre-order it now if you want to pick it up at Gen Con. It will be soon, out soon in stores right after that. And now that we're done with that, Ignacy, like with every person that's come up on this stage, we want to do a special activity with you. And for those of you who may not know, Ignacy is a connoisseur of cookies. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, if, if you go back and look in his demo room right now, which I happen to go look, there's just tons of cookie boxes all over the place. People bring you see him what cookies. what I have there on my laptop? Yeah, there's a cookie sitting over there on his laptop <laughs> right now. There it is. But, so people constantly bring him cookies, and it's just insane. So since you're such a connoisseur of cookies, we're going to give you a cookie test. We have before us eight cookies. Are you serious? Yes. yes. <laughs> Are we serious? <laughs> he has not watched any of our live stream yet to wonder if we're serious or not. Yep. <laughs> we were going to slide it. Now, all the cookies are on napkins, so they're sanitary and everything. We're going to slide it over to you. You will taste the cookie and see if you can identify the flavor or what type of cookie it is. But using your mouth only because you will be blindfolded, no peeking. <laughs> So we have a blindfold okay, for you. Okay. <laughs> and none of these, by the way, none of these are tricks. We're yeah. not going to stick a hot tamale in your mouth. And all these are no. legit cookies. We're not going to be mean, so don't have yeah. any fear about that at all. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So if you would go ahead and put on the blindfold. This is happening. I can't <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. oh, and just before we begin, uh, continue using the hashtag uh, to enter the contest we've been running. But uh, this particular one is just for fun. Uh, so this is, uh, no, no, nothing is on the line for this one, but continue using the hashtag to enter the three contests that we've run so far today. Okay, we're going to start out with an easy one, okay? Remember that my English vocabulary may be not enough, but I always try. Like. <laughs> okay, this, this is an easy one. So there's an napkin in front of you and the cookie is on it. <laughs> just... Why so small? Because <laughs> we don't need cookies. Oh, there are two of cookies. them. Well, you kind of tore it in half. So it's Oreo. It is an Oreo. Absolutely. Congratulations! And you and you took the part the other okay. half. Yeah. Now you got the uh, the creamy part. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Chaz, you want to go for the next All one? All right. Here's the next one, sir. Oh, sorry. Oh, right up here. <laughs> what happened? Somebody, somebody stole it. No, it's right in front of you. Mm. Hmm. Oh, yeah. This one I don't recognize. Are you looking for brand name? No, 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 brand. Just, just type. type. Just type cookie. Just, just stand. Type. It has a chocolate bit, right? Yes. So it looks like a, the one that I have a lot of them in my room that I get them. Again, you don't have to name brand, just what type of cookie it is. It looks like a very regular cookie with the uh, pieces of chocolate. Chocolate chip cookie. Absolutely. You got it. That's Absolutely. it. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> and he finishes that off. I didn't know what you were doing. <laughs> and we'll slide that one away. So we'll come over to the next one. There's the napkin right in front of you. It's there another you small cookie. Mm -hmm. 
you can use some tactile. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, certainly, uh, certainly. Yeah. Okay, it takes a little small bite. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't pop the whole thing in his mouth. This one, I don't know. This must be something American that I don't know. Okay. What it is, is that? It is called a fudge stripe cookie. So it's a cookie with chocolate on the bottom and chocolate stripes on the top. I don't, I don't, I don't know it. Well, there you go. It's a fudge, fudge stripe. Hey, we got, we got to introduce Ignacio to a new type of cookie. Yes. Yeah, yeah. so you go get us some fudge stripes. I like it so. <laughs> now this one isn't a particular type, but it's a flavor. So you can just tell us what type of cookie it is. Do you need any water? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> it has a nugget. A nugget. What's the flavor of the cookie, pretty much? Looking for the flavor. I would say nuggets. Nuggets cream, something like from the nuggets. Is that true? But peanut butter. Oh. Peanut butter cookie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Here's another one. Again, it's not a brand, it's a particular just flavor of cookie. <laughs> I like how he uh, kind of feels the cookie. Can I tell from how it feels what it is? Sometimes you can. Mmm, this one is very crispy. Very good. Mm -hmm. This is actually one of my favorite type of cookies. Usually I like them soft. They're soft versions, but I... No, this is I this one is a, like, this is a... Um, how do you say it in English? That it's not... Um, oat, my hand oat, or something like... Oatmeal. Yep. Oh, that's like it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. My handwriting I, is off. I passed, I, I passed that, that test in the cookies and in English. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Okay, we've got, uh, what, three yeah. more? Right. I'll move that out of the way. Three more here. <laughs> it's like, where is it? <laughs> this one may be more generic, but yeah, this. Hmm. hmm. Well, this flavor. <laughs> The man knows this is so funny. He's like he's sipping a fine wine. It's like, he's like, like a little bit of... Does it have legs? I do. Stripes. It is very close to Oreo once again. Yes. But I don't... The, the, the thing in the middle is lagging from the Oreo, but I don't know the English word for that. Word. Okay. Um, this is vanilla cream. Yeah. yeah. Vanilla yeah. cream. Yeah. No, we don't. All right. So we've got two left. Here we go, right in front. I have them in my hotel room. I should have asked if he was allergic to anything. No, no, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> these are these are European cookies from the, from from the Netherlands. Uh, okay, <laughs> they weren't. Okay, <laughs> but maybe something like it. Yeah, oh, yeah that's quite possible. And is there a certain flavor that sticks out? It's the flavor of the cookie. It's not a cinnamon, but it's something like very close to that. No, it's not. It's no, a, it's a it's a tropical in nature. How about that? The main flavoring. Oh, what's that? What's that? Coconut. Really? Yep. Do you taste it? No. No. So in Poland we have a cookie called kokosanki, okay. which is from coconut, but it it is it is deep, much different in taste. That's very oh. strange. Well, I would like to try that sometime. Yeah. All right, the last one, my friend. There you go. <laughs> oh, I didn't write that one, but. <laughs> oh, that's very strange. Hmm. What do you think? I know this. 
Yes, you do know this. <laughs> is that Moon Pie? It is Moon Pie! <laughs> <laughs> That's it, you made a blindfold off. Excellent work. That was, a real that, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> when do we record again? <laughs> and, and here's the thing. There's a whole bag of cookies behind this table. All those are yours to take Thank back you. to the demo room that you can give to everybody that comes in there and yeah, to all the people cool. that are demoing. Or you can keep them for yourself. Thank Your you. call. Ignacy, thank you so much for coming on. That was yes. a blast. Everybody remember to be looking for Detective. That's going to be coming out at Gen Con. Uh, I'm so glad that we got to play it before we talked to get, you because cool. we can give it our approval. Honestly, oh, yes. it's one of those games Lower that... Lower the hype, remember, like, be, be careful. Well, no, I'm just saying it's one of those games that it's not like you're going to get it from the table and walk away and forget. Like some games you play and you kind of walk away and forget it. It's an experience. They do the guessing. It's a the player experience. <coughs> I was going to ask, is the pre-order period still available? Um, or we, no, we have uh, some number of fixed number of copies for the Gen Con. Uh -huh. So, and we are taking pre-orders. Uh, I don't expect that we will have more pre-orders than we have games for the Gen Con, but in theory it may happen. But basically, okay. we'll, we'll close them like a few days before Gen Con. Okay. So if someone is watching this and they wanted to go pre-order it, they still could. Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Perfect. Fanta and and with your pre-order, you get a bunch of stuff. For Gen Con, no, because it was only for the pre-orders. Uh, only for the pre-orders earlier. Uh, from, shipped from the Poland. For the pre-orders, uh, for Gen Con, I think we have some uh, small surprise for the guys. Uh, but the, all these all this crazy go goodies are already shipped to the, to the, to the pre-orders. And I believe if, if people follow you on, on Twitter, I think you tweeted out a picture of the detective came in today. Yeah. Ready to be shipped yeah, out. Yeah, we are, we, I, when I woke up today in the morning, I had a information from our office, we are just shipping. So they, today they should start shipping. Okay, so if you pre-order earlier in the year, there's going to be shipping out soon. And if not, you can get it at Gen Con. Ignacy, thank you so much My for pleasure. coming I, home. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> we thought you might like that. What we're going to do is we're going to take a five minute break and we're going to finish out the afternoon with Jamie Keggy coming on where we're going to play a special game of Wits and Wagers. So we'll be right back in just a couple minutes. Thank you.